they are busy at the backside of the church. And I just want us to please put our hands together and appreciate those who put these things together to make things work. Praise God. Please, I don't know if I can ask a favor. Can we just appreciate them properly? It's not, it's not because we, are, we don't know what to do. It's that we want to appreciate them and I think we should do that properly. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Alright, I have a word for you and I hope it will bless your heart. And I'm ready to go into that word if you are ready. Are we ready to go into God's word now? Thank you very much, choir, for that beautiful ministration. And I'm hoping that it will be a great one even at the end of the day. So today is um, today is 19th. So we have two more Sundays. Is it one more Sunday or two more Sundays? One more Sunday. Next week Sunday is our last Sunday. It's our Thanksgiving Sunday. That's why I'm not sure. All right, so we want to come as a single service. If you notice, almost throughout the month of December, except for last week, is it last week? Even last week was a single Sunday. Yeah. Almost throughout December, we've been having a single service experience. So next week, Sunday is 26th, the last Sunday of the year 2021. I want us to please come together in our native attire. I want us to dance. Amen. I want us to play, pray. Okay, you must come around and play keyboard that day. Understand? So, it's an instruction. Don't see the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So, don't play with Lydia. You know? So, um, we'll come around and we have a great time. I want us to dance and make melody in our hearts unto Jesus. Is that okay, please? Yes, please, if you are glad to see the second to last Sunday and next Sunday, but let's give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate him powerfully. Amen. Alright, so we're going to go into God's word right about now. And um, I have something in my heart that is staring. I want to say it. <laughs> and I, I'm hoping that you will understand where I'm coming from, understand where I am, and I, how, what I really intend to do with today's teaching. Let us bow our heads and our hearts as we go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to read verse... 40 into chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. Oh, something just like that. Let's do this. From verse 40 of Hebrews 11 into chapter 1 of chapter 12. Into verse 1 of chapter 12 down to verse 3. Let's read. Here begin at the reading of God's word. I'm reading the KJV version. And please let's do this together. In verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud. Beg your pardon, I'm reading verse, chapter, verse 1. Let me read from verse 40 again of chapter 11. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be perfect. Let's read that again. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. I want to please note that. Verse 1 of chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye, that is you and I, be wearied and faint in your minds. Oh, Spirit of God. Father, once again I ask that you make me say the thing you want me to say in Jesus' name. Please look up. Of God. I want to share something with and I'm, I'm a little frustrated of this because I understand what the Father is trying to say in this sense especially. This story tells us that God has made something very beautiful for us in our future, in that verse 40 of chapter 11. Now if you study the scriptures, you know that Hebrews 11 is a book of, they call it the Hall of Faith, where we talk about people that have lived life of faith. It started with, the, with God himself. said God created the heavens and the earth, the things that we see from the things that were not seen. And he went on and told us about different other people, starting with Abel. Abel by faith offered a noble sacrifice and his brother came. He went ahead and told us about Noah. Noah by faith built the ark. Told us about Abraham. 
Abraham and said, said about Sarah. I went on and on till the disciples, you know, to the early apostles and prophets and the patriarchs. What am I trying to bring up from that? The Bible says God has stored something very good. If I call better, someone say better. When the Bible says better, it knows what it's saying. The Bible says God has stored something better for you and I. In this service in particular, I have chosen to title it Finishing Your Race and Crossing Your Lines. And I pray that as God is bringing us to the end and the closure of 2021, you will find the ethos, strength, and enthusiasm to step into 2022 to know that God has ordained that something better will happen for you in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to be having our watch night service, but you can preempt that I'm already tilting you in that direction. That God wants you to cross certain lines. The Bible tells us about Jesus Christ, our master, our ruler, and our king. The Bible calls it that he said, it's in who for the joy set before him, endure the cross. He said, let us therefore run our race like Christ did his own. He said, who for the joy set before him, endure the cross, despise the shame. You know, in life as well, if we really would face truth, many of us go through situations that are not exactly what we want. You maybe have started in 2021, and what you wanted of 2021 was that God would give you the very best of himself. There was almost nobody here, I hope, I believe, that started 2021 without some level of expectation. There was somebody here that trusted that this year of things will happen for me. Maybe this year you trusted that you are going to get a certain thing. You are going to get a certain this, a certain target. Certain things that you know were personal to you. And I'm not only talking about things. For some people, even emotional. You wanted to get married. You want to have a baby. You want to get a visa. You want to travel out. And you see, although those things are not eternal life by themselves, but they are encouragement for the greater cause of our destiny. Can I get a witness here? Yes, that I bought a car doesn't have gotten eternal life. I agree. But I'm saying it can encourage me towards the goals I want to achieve in life. So don't tell me to undermine the importance of finding that. Even though I'm not sort of like glorified, it, but I'm, don't tell me to undermine the little, little successes that I ought to achieve in my life. Can I get a witness in there? There are things that will make your life count more significantly. That will make you know that things are happening in the direction of your trajectory. The things that you want to happen in your life. For example, some people, let's say we start with spiritual, wanted a more intimate relationship with God. You see, let's start with that. And so let's start with that to make sure that we are spiritual enough to admit that we need to get more spiritual with our Christian life. Somebody wanted to keep a fast every three at the beginning of every month in, in this year, 2021, but was not able to keep it. And for all it's worth, you have journeyed through 2021. It's December. What's today's day? 19. And you have not been able to keep that promise with yourself to God. It's my prayer today. That whatever you have not experienced up till now, God will collapse time suddenly in your favor in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for someone here from my heart that God will encourage you with practical results that will encourage you even through the rest part of this year in the name of Jesus. So what we look at is that God gives us a desire in our hearts. That we give plants desires. The Bible says God has set eternity in our hearts. Let me explain what that means to you. Although you don't know what will happen tomorrow, but somewhere in your heart, you know that there's something good for you in the future. There's something in everybody's heart. The Bible says nobody knows the things of a man, save the spirit of the man that be in him. Somewhere in your heart, when you see the woman you want to marry, you know this woman is good for my destiny. I was laughing today at myself in the mirror while I was thinking, gosh, gosh. I remember when I was still speaking to my about getting married to her. I we must have chatted and said yes, and she was just speaking away. Now women will not tell you yes, will not tell you. So I was just calling her up. You know, I was just calling her up. Early morning, I left my school. After many prayers, I just went wah, to the place. I was so excited. I got there, sat down, and she was rushing. And I just sat down. I said, oh, you know how this external hostel is happening? It was a flat. So I sat down there and I said, oh, you, you are, you are going to do battle at three sons. Oh, I said, I said so. When she asked me, said yes. I said, you are going to do battle at three sons. I don't know my daughter. I'm chiding. Because somewhere, somewhere in me, maybe that's why I'm not having I'm the only one in my blood like that. I'm like, what? Well, but the point I'm making is that somewhere in my mind, when I saw her, I said, this woman, children will be beautiful. I'm telling you. And I knew somewhere, I don't, when I saw her, I couldn't just, there were many other sisters in the church, many other sisters in the church that you know. But I just said, this is the woman I'm going to marry. There's somewhere in your heart, when you see what things you know, you cannot do. Or you don't know what things you know. There are some things you see, there are some things you got to do that kind of Amen. You know those PO boxes you go to? 3, 4, 2, 1, 2, 3. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, but there are some things in life that feed you. Sometimes you see a man is well dressed. And you say, why will a man be better dressed than you? So, what do you want to marry? That's that thing I just have to No, no, what am I saying this morning? There are things in life that fit your future, that befit your destiny. There are people in life that you deserve. There are stages you should stand on. There are elevations that inside your heart you know you to deserve a good thing. That's what God said to you. Now. That the things He has planted in your heart, it is for you to decide if you want to reach them. It's for you to decide. Nobody knows the things of a man's so spirit of a man that fit you. It will surprise you that there will be good and better here, and some people still choose good. Because it's not them to go for better. Yes, that's why not everybody wants to go for better. But for some people, for some of us, when we see greatness, something tells us there is more in life. There's more we can do more. Can I hear your hearing on this? And I'm going to draw your attention to the fact that anyone under the sound of my voice today, that they have lost the energy and the enthusiasm to experience more in his life, today may he be restored.
restored to you in the name of Jesus. Because one of the things that makes life count valuably for us is those things that we are able to get life to mean for us. Those things we are able to achieve in life. The lines we are able to cross, the barriers we are able to break. And so in life, knowing that God has put things in front of us, sometimes we just find that we are not able to reach for those things. Have you ever been there? Sometimes the line some people have never crossed in their life is a millionaire line. They've never, some people have never crossed 500,000. It's not that money they need that job. They are job 4999. They can't cross it. There are lines in life. There are lines in life that some people understand better. Some people, especially, some people understand it better than others. Yeah, there are some things you want to do that it just looks like you can't cross that line. This year, God will give you the energy. You will cross that line. You will break that barrier. You will finish your race in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as a primary school boy, I remember I told this story. I have never become first. I don't know if some of you have never become first. If you know that relationship, can we give the Lord a round of applause? <laughs> yeah, you see, even in clapping first, you can't come first. You see, 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 you'll be surprised here that some people don't know what it's like to best. Best now. That's in the school I went to. They clap for those that are getting first. They will be punished. ourselves from excellence. You've almost told yourself, it's not for me. And I prophesy, whatever has been your desire, may God bring it to pass in Jesus' name. I speak as a prophet this morning. The circumstances that will favor your death. May they begin to happen for you. I prophesy recovery upon every dream. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God planted desire in our hearts so that we can reach for it and be satisfied. There is a joy that success does for someone. If you've ever succeeded, we know that success reinforces success. If you've ever tasted success, we know that it will energize you for more. If you've ever applied for visa and they did not give you you will know that you don't feel like applying for visa again. Uh, is that, does anybody know what I'm talking about here? When they give you that, that zip blue or white slipper, and you are going home, you'll be walking like as if they gave you visa. You will keep all your passport and be going home. Uh, if it's US visa. Very annoying. If the test is 4.30, it's US. They tell you, stand up. Sit down. Stand up. Sit down. And that's how you'll be shaking. Stand up. Sit down. One security man, no? and you now come to church. They'll tell you, sit down. You say, what am I saying? Whereas for visa, you will queue. You will be asking. This when I sit down. Are we, are we in the right place? Are we doing the right thing? When there is a dream in your heart, you want to go to the United States of America. And listen, it is possible that you will go. There are people that go to the States or get visa that don't look as qualified as you. Hello. Am I talking some sense to you? I remember one early morning, I went to the embassy. And when I got there, 
one of my colleagues, very short, they call him Dan. I don't know if you know those type of names. Dan, he just shouted, Pastor! At the embassy. I said, ah, who is this one? Who is this one? He happened to be advocate in the church of the US. Ah, he's a pastor of all law. That means I'm a pastor of all law. All law now. He that went there thinking I was dressed in suit. He for me a bounced. The way the lady says, so, she didn't check my document. He says, sorry right now, you can't get this visa to go home. I say, ah, is it that personal? He said, no. Hey, listen, whatever good thing is supposed to be yours, put up your right hand. Say, I will taste my dream inside. Say, I will participate in my future. Say, I will experience the best of life. Say, I refuse to be average. Say, I break every line. I break every barrier. I cross every line. In the name of the Lord Jesus. There are lines that seem to stand between us and our dreams. There are milestones that seem to stand between us and our future. Like I was saying earlier on, I'd never been the first before in primary school. And I wanted to be. Actually, my dad challenged me. He said, is it not somebody who was the first in your class? And I said, it's true. I didn't know it. My name was Grace. I remember the name. Grace. Oh, yes, I know. The one in my primary school, I remember her, she was Viviana. I'm telling you, primary school kid. I'm telling you, I remember this date. Viviana. They would just confess. And I would what, what did you write that I did not write? I remember. I remember her. I remember. I can tell you, I remember. I just called their names. I'm telling you, I can't remember the date. Guess what, sir? Only I did myself feel like you're confessed. There's a day you must tell yourself, me too, I can. Can that day be today? Look at your neighbor, say, me too, I can. Look at another neighbor that cares for you better. Say, me too, I can. I remember that day when I closed the exams. It was the final promotion exams. She had come first, first term. First term, I came fourth. The second time, I came second. You know, you keep getting better. And then the last term, the promotional exam, I came first. I just saw the girl crying by the corner. I said, why are you crying? I can't forget. I said, why are you crying? Then my, my friend, Christopher, said, it's because you came first. That the boy has confessed. It was him. Sir, let me tell you something. The taste of victory is to never lose taste of victory. To never lose taste of victory. I remember she was crying. I said, Why are you crying? Because you came first. Because you came first. Oh, I said, Is that why you are crying? You feel like you are carrying first all this wedding. Oh. <laughs> so, anytime you hear that song, oh, you just to talent. I, that's what I used to remember. I'm telling you. She came first. She came first. And that day was the promotional one. I said, thank God. Then they now called my name. The first position goes to, hey, can you imagine my steps? I was in primary three. I remember, sir. I remember. I used to tell mama, don't think, I'm telling you, I used to tell her, don't think I'm celebrating children. I remember my primary three. They called my name and I climbed up the staircase at Abaya. And I met Mrs. Shodunke. I remember. I remember very well. And I shook hands. And the taste of first was the best in my mouth ever. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do well in life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your own might not be first again. It might be too late. Even in today's education, they no longer consider first or second or anything. They say everybody got A or something. I don't know. That thing is deception. <laughs> they just package everybody together. But you know what I found out? At the back end, they know who is first. <laughs> and I'm saying to you, sir, you deserve it. You deserve beautiful. I want to challenge you to know that if you're not going to fall on your lap, you need to reach out for it. And in reaching out for it, there are things that will challenge you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Reach out. Did you read what we said when we wrote, read about Jesus Christ? The Bible says, go for the joy set before you. Be to went through those tiny stages of reaching out. Reaching out. What things do you want to achieve in your life that life is telling you no, you can't reach me? What things you want to catch? That life is saying, catch me if you can. And I'm saying to you today, sir, until you become that conscious of what you want to achieve in your life, life will continue to be elusive for you. It will continue to dodge you. It will continue to look like you can't get me. You can't get me. It's not for you. I'm not for you. But today, I pray and prophesy. Whatever you have been looking for begins to look for you. And I said that prayer a bit better than that. I said, whatever you have been looking for begins to look for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are talking about crossing lines. What lines 
does your life have? What lines must you cross today? What barriers do you have in your life? Are there things you've been chasing that you have not ever been able to touch? You know, some Yorubas can be very terrible when they say, Wa le 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 wa ba, to ba ba bolo we. There are people that are very wicked. That your progress is an irritation for them. The, the, the bad will of some people will not let anything good in your hand last. I'm telling you. Just when you've got it, they'll say, ah, it's going to drop. I'm telling you. You just got a relationship that's been late 30 years. They say she's I remember the day uh, at the express office. I took my friend, Mama, to see one of my friends. And the day I introduced my friend to Mama, to my friend, yes, not Mama, I was not Mama, they said, Mama, I, I took her to the office. I called my friend. I said, This is the person I want to be married. I mean, I said, This is the face I'm seeing. I didn't know that. And as I turned my back and left, I said, Mama, I only to see him. I said, Mama, as soon as I left, he was telling me that that my friend was telling her how that it cannot work. I'm trying to tell you there are people not exactly as happy with you about the things that they are for. I brought to introduce because of you. What did you bring in her to you know with a lot of respect and and as I turned my back, as I was doing. of Jesus Christ. Some people, they are like that even if they get something good, it is average. They never touch excellence. Some have never touched anything new, brand new. I'm telling you, sir. <laughs> but the God you serve, the Bible says he makes all things new. Your God wants you to touch new things. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. I came prophetically this morning. I came prophetically. Some people, they've never touched anything seen a passport, international passport. Some, if not, they've been trusting God to cross the line of having pregnancy. That somebody is even pregnant. I know a man of God who was having seven daughters. Seven daughters. He was praying for others. They were having male children. He couldn't have. When he crossed that line, ah, it's a good line to cross. Sir. When you cross what you have never done before, the feeling is different. I pray that what you've never done before, God will help you do. Amen. Say that amen like a thunder. Amen. I said say amen like a thunder. Amen. We must know that in our lives we too deserve good things. The first thing is to even know that you can even get it. To define what is your line. But some families, nobody crosses 47. Nobody must touch 50. I know the pastor friend, he's not, he told us here when he came to church. He told us, he said nobody was to cross 46 in his family. He celebrated his 50th. I brought his t-shirts two years ago. It was a big celebration because they decided nobody must cross 47. There are people who are called principality who are just not happy that you do well. And I'm not speaking about deep spirits that are flying with long teeth. Some of your neighbor just don't have the goodwill towards you. I'm telling you. Somebody looks at you and says, ah, why should she get 70 over 70? Reduce it to 46. Just to keep you small. Wrong perspectives. People who don't have the right 
right value for me to have. But today, I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever barrier has limited you, whatever barrier has limited your life, mentally, emotionally, or even spiritually, today it is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Say that amen like though you are powerful. 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 In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. And I'm trying to bring something to our attention today. That God wants the very best for you and I. That God wants the very best. Like I said, this message might not be for everybody. But those it is for. I pray that you will utilize it properly in Jesus' name. God wants the very best for us. How some people have struggled, 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 struggled all their lives. Do you know some people have not bought a cloth in a long time that is good? Some have never eaten food that is theirs. Lazarus was the man in the Bible. The Bible says he fed consistently on crumbs. Imagine eating crumbs. Consistent. He was a Christian. So I'm not talking about maybe he's a sinner. Don't think that someone, because somebody is suffering, is an unbeliever. It's not true. Lazarus' name was in the book of life. If I the rich man's name, they don't even know him. I, I get what I'm saying here. So don't think because somebody is suffering that maybe God is not with him, or because bad things happen to a good person, you say maybe God has left him. Don't ever think like that. The Bible says Jesus Christ, who for the joy set before him, despised the shame. He too was ashamed. He was embarrassed. You know they give us the impression that Jesus Christ died with a long cloth covering his body. He was naked. He was naked. But prophetically, things turned around. And he went through that nakedness so that you and I would not be naked. Lines we must cross. Some is emotional lines. There are some who have never seen a man stand up and say, I love you. And say, I want to marry. They've never heard it before. They've never, you might think I'm talking far. It's not far away. That no man has stood up and said, I love you. I would like to marry you. You don't know what it is. That's a line you should cross. That's a line you should cross. Barriers. You have never had more than 6,000 in your account ever. Never. And you might think I'm talking far away. I'm not talking far away. It's a legend I'm in touch. I'm in touch. I get to get there. They've never crossed the line. Some is health. The doctor is waiting for them. On the 24th of every month, they know where to come. They know. Some is not doctor, it's the pharmacist. Okay? As they enter, they, they know how to give them their drugs. I don't know what repetition has been going on in your life. It might be a story of delay, it might be a sequence. And you have been quiet about it. You have been quiet about it. You have been thinking that God will do it one day. Today is that day. I said, Today is that day. I said, Today is that day. Some don't even have any other, you know, and it is so varied. What I'm saying today is about anything that you have never done before or you have been trying to do, you have not successfully done, is a line, is a barrier. You must learn to cross it. And guess what? There is no promised land God ever promised anybody that does not have giants. We must be giant killers, sir. You must be prepared. Some people are too lazy to kill their giant. Let's be clear example some reasons why some people don't cross their mind. Number one, they don't have strong desire. They are not particular about it. They are not particular. It's not, it's not interesting. They are not, whether it is first to, whether it's, they are not interesting. They just give me something. There is no definition of what they really want. It's one major reason why some people never cross the line because they never even had one in the first place. Number two, they lack mentoring. Crossing lines requires excellence. You don't cross lines as a mediocre. You could use some help here and there. Nobody goes far in life without a little help. God never designed anybody to survive or succeed alone. We are all designed to relate together. Can I hear your amen on this? That is the God of the Bible. Don't confuse us. 
the God of the Bible ensured nobody stands alone. Nobody, including Jesus Christ. Including Jesus Christ. He never stood alone. He was born of a virgin mother. Who suckled him up? All of us were designed or are designed to succeed together. Nobody is designed to stand alone. Number three, what is the other reason why some people don't ever get to succeed or cross their lines? They are easily discouraged. Any small thing, they give up. Any small thing. They say, I should not collect it though. No, you cannot succeed by being easily discouraged. You must have strong desire. Someone said, say strong desire. If you really want it, you will get it if you really want it. If you really want it. If you really want it. You can get it if you really want it. There's a song like that. You can get it if you really want it. You can get it. There's a song like that. Very good. Shazam. There is a power when you really know what you want. What you want. Some people, any way benefit, just give me something. What will you eat? Anything. What will you drink? Anything. They don't have any clear desire. So anything is something for them. Anything. What would you like to say? Anything. What do you know? Anything. What don't you want? Anything. How would you get anything? The next reason why some people don't get what they want or not crossing their lines or not finishing their reins is unwillingness to try again. They are failed once, they don't try again. This is different from discouragement, but they are related. Discouragement is that, I don't work, no. This one, yeah, this one is unwilling to try again. Sir, you did not get it the first time, do it again. Go again. That's the proof you really want something. Number next, the reason why some people don't get something is that they never fight to the end. There was an interview. Let me just share this story. Very interesting. It might help someone. A gentleman went for an interview, and in that interview, they wrote there, attempt all questions. What did I say? Attempt all questions. They did not say, answer correctly every question. This gentleman was discouraged. He did not attempt questions he did not know. And then they called all of them at the end of the whole session and said, sir, you are not getting this job. He said, why? He said, because we did not tell you to get all questions right. Told you attempt all questions in life. Just follow the attempt. Just attempt. Attempt. Why would something good be passing by? And you say it's not for you. Why? Who says it cannot be for you? A woman entered into a room where they were counting money, and she told them, "Ah, that's all. So you are carrying your own bag of money, full of money. So you are welcome. Carry your own bag. Just attempt to even open the door. Just enter." Sir, be part of life. Don't excuse yourself from something good. Amen. Let's go to that restaurant. Oh, okay. Is it me they are looking for there? That, you can't succeed that way. The unfortunate truth is that some of us are not only failing our lives, we are also preparing to make our children feel like we failed. That cannot continue, sir. It's unfair. Why must your children drink from your poverty? Why must they draw from your lack of confidence in life? Today that story ends. Another reason why some people never cross their line is that they have poor character. They can't greet. Well, things are changing these days. Because for a greeting alone, a man can decide to marry. You will not believe it. The reason why men marry women, I'm telling you, sisters, if you ever know the real reason why men are looking for you, you'll be surprised. For some people, that you have not given your name. Is that for some people that your teeth is fine. For some people that you have character. Welcome. Welcome. How are you? Who can do welcome? How are you? There's some people still can't do that welcome. They can't. It's a must I greet everybody. Am I Mr. Green? This is Mr. Green. Do you know what I'm talking about? Poor character. How are you? Is that, is that every time? How are you? Do I look sick? <laughs> Poor character. Poor judgment. That's another one. Poor judgment. The way you interpret things are poor. 
poor, everything poor, everything in the light of poverty. The light of poverty. I don't mind if you have suffered in your life, but don't let your children suffer. Don't let the next generation after you suffer. Some of you are not the father, but you are the breadwinner of that family. You are the head of that family. Take these values home. And that reason why some people will never succeed in crossing their lines is because they, re- they work with bad friends. Some friendship will never lead you to good things. And I don't mean that, I can't even say it too much or say it enough. Some friendship will always make you feel small. Run away from them. You too, God died for you. You too deserve good things. Help me look at your neighbor and tell the person for me, say, you too deserve good things. And you touch that neighbor for me like, no, it's too early to sleep on this service. Say, you too deserve good things in life. You need to know it, sir. You need to know it, ma. You too deserve good things. <laughs> Praise God. And some of those good things is what we want to share today. The love of Jesus Christ. Let me quickly talk to you about what I consider will help you. What are the things that will help you? Let me talk about the lines you should necessarily cross in life. And I'll talk about the things that will help you quickly, please. What are those lines we must cross? Number one, you must cross your financial lines. Anything that has told you, your fin- because your finance is important to your life. If you don't have money in life, sometimes you look like God does not love you. Hello, sir. <laughs> I'm telling you. And listen, sir, don't think by begging people will pity you and give you things. People will love you and give you things that you don't even deserve by how you profile yourself concern how you see yourself. Yeah. You will think the beggar has more because he begged. You find out what they will give to the person dancing or calling their name. Hey man, you don't know see why. Hey man, you don't spray money. You are begging to put for the gift one. The person singing has plenty notes. It's by value. By value. Hello. You know what I'm saying? Some of us go up. Man, you know, I can spray. Bondu. I don't even spray notes again. Bondu. Bondu. Then you are saying, hey, you have to They give you one note. Turn, they even pick it from the pocket. So it's by value. Stop begging. Start to put value on yourself. You know what I just said? Stop begging. Start to put value on yourself. You are a child of dignity. You are a child of dignity. Stop teaching your children how to beg. Let them put value on themselves. And I wonder why some people don't understand how God has made life so easy. The church, look at the church like this. You can walk in free. Nobody is going to collect tax from you. It's not a clubhouse. And your child will walk in here and be inspired for life. Church is a beautiful place. You will relate to the doctor like as if you are not. Church is a beautiful place. Yet you say, You that you don't go to church, what's good about your life? I remember very well how my father had to call my pastor and said to him, why is this boy always going to church? And my pastor came to tell my father and said, if this Alexander doesn't turn out responsible, hold me responsible. That's a beautiful thing. I was always in the house. First I went to Grand stay with Lauren last night. I was always in this house. I grew up with doctors. I lived. In fact, you know, we don't have too many girls in our family. They also had my sisters. Do you understand? Yes, you say, till tomorrow, the children are brought everybody is doing well. Everybody is doing, everybody is doing well. There's no better place to be than the house of God. A good house like this, bro. Can I hear your amen on that? Because you will find value. You will find strength. Somebody will encourage you. All the discouragement that they beat you black and blue. You finish prostrating yourself on the street. Now come and say, do me a miracle. Do something new. He's not doing anything new. He has been shouting since. He's not doing anything new. Do something new in my life. He's not doing nothing. (laughs) 
Thank God I didn't wear my chain this morning. What am I saying? We must be discerning people to know when God wants to help us. He will send people into your life. He will send right association. It will look like coincidence. It's to move you somewhere, sir. It's to move you somewhere. And you are not discerning that this is God trying to tell you something. Some of us meet very precious relationships and we abuse it with our character. Instead of you taking your children closer to people that will inspire them, you are taking them close to people that will make them how to drink and give them eating iron. I told you the story of that lady that was a prostitute last week. True story. True story. She said, One more. In your bar, we went to break. One more. Wait, I did the what happened? She was a prostitute. And each time the men are leaving, they give her daughter 50 naira. And look at her. They say, like mother, like daughter. One day, I'm coming for you. I'm telling you. One day she saw the daughter. The way she was running to it. In fact, I did tell you that part. She told them, she would tell the daughter, go and play. And in two minutes, the child will come back. I finished playing. Which child finished playing? Do you get the point? She doesn't want to miss when that man is going. You know the point? So they say, take this, take this. The young girl, she's making 50 naira from seven men in a day. That's 350 naira. That's a miracle for a child. Am I making some sense? What do you think our prayer point to be? Lord, bring more men. <laughs> Lord, bring. Do you understand? The woman said, I know that my own is finished. But don't let my own child finish. I told you, she took the child to the motherless pastor's house. I said, Pastor, is this a motherless baby home? <laughs> the pastor said, Yes. So let me confess, this one is not motherless. I'm the mother. But you know this child's own is finished? I mean, I know this my own is finished. Our own, not mine. I know our own. I said, but don't let this child own. I beg you, keep this child. You will die on this day. Do you want to come out of what you are doing? Church. She said, yes. What would you like to do? Say a recharge grad. I told you the story. is said, the child is a graduate. Association. Some people met a good friend and it changed their lives forever. 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 <laughs> I want to pray for six people here. May God bring you an encounter with destiny-making people. Amen. From this teaching today, may something prophetic happen for you. Amen. May God encourage and re-engineer your life. Amen. May God facilitate your destiny. Amen. Receive a blessing. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let me wrap it up quickly. Two more things I'll just say and then we pray and then we close. The next thing I want to drop your attention here are things that can make life very difficult for people is impatience. I'll use this one and then the last one. Impatience. A lot of people fail in life because they are not patient. Not because God is not working for them, but they are too impatient for what God is trying to do. Patience is a necessity if you must experience God. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36, the Bible says that for you have need of patience. Hebrews 10, 36. For you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, you might inherit the promise. And lastly, is lack of spirituality. Life is spiritual, sir. Life is spiritual. Not everything you see can be explained. In fact, even the explanation is confirmation that there's something that is responsible for it. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is so spiritual I can tell you for free. Life is spiritual. Everything is happening for a reason. That you don't know the reason does not mean it's not happening for a reason. Yes. That something is that this light is here. Everything is for a reason. Anything you see. So spirituality helps us get life right. There is a man that will ask a lady out. And that man, in five years' time, will bury that woman in his hands. Yet there is another man that will ask a lady out. And that man is the one that will help that lady grow into a future. 
first man that came. Came first. Look gentle. Came from a good home. And that lady still said no. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. I'm praying that the reasons of your life will aggregate. They will count for something significant. Say better amen. amen. Spirituality. You cannot do life without prayer. So what are the things that you need to cross your lines? What are the things you need to have to cross your lines? I'll give you just four of them. Number one, prayer. Prayer. Prayer is so, so important. There is no exaggeration. Prayer is arguably the most important thing that makes sure that if you are missing your lines, God will take you back on track. Pray every day. It's not just for nothing. Some people pray and others laugh at them. One low, two thing, Lord. You know that song? Eh? Let me see. One in there, What does he say? Then he say, one low, two thing, Lord. That means he's going again. Yes. You know the point? Many people don't realize it, that even if you pray and you don't get the answers for yourself, your prayers are never wasted. They can be transferred. So they catch six children. Bam! And your child is part of them. But for some reason, they allow your child to go. <laughs> and you think it's luck. <laughs> Do you know how many people not, they not commit offense like your child that they nearly destroyed? Prayer can be transferred. Now, even in your death, prayer can be working. Prayer. So you get tired of praying. Prayer is, is like currency, like depositing. They're like just depositing. Prayer is never wasted. Because they are spirit-filled words. They never die. And praise God. The day you go for the interview, one, they want to do you one chance, one chance, one chance, one chance. Something just happens. So you come down, you come down. They shot the other person beside you, they didn't shoot you. Prayer. <laughs> prayer. The day prayer will work for you, we know the value. Listen, pray every day. Don't miss a chance to pray. Don't miss a chance to give. Don't miss a chance to love. There are investments that you cannot pay back for. I'm telling you. Things work. Let them. The Bible says that God sought for a man, just one man that was praying, so that he can avert the evil of Sodom and can I just find one man? Nobody was praying. It's a very bad thing if nobody's mentioning your name daily for prayer. I'm telling you the truth. That nobody has you in mind daily for prayers. Then you wonder why favors don't come. Favors are spiritual. Favors are spiritual. And then let's close with this. Number two thing, so I said prayer. Number two is keeping the right company. Number three is never give up. And number four is keep repeating your efforts. Keep repeating your efforts. I just want to keep today's teaching very prophetic and simple. That everyone under the sound of my voice, you need to cross certain lines. Look at your life. What lines have you not crossed? What lines do you want to cross? Somebody doesn't have the most expensive thing in your life most expensive thing in your life. Don't let me call it price. So you won't get angry. I'm telling you. And you know you can cross it like this. They tell you, how much is this thing? 45,000. Yeah! Effect family. Effect family. In what gain in 45,000? In poverty, no key. And what I'm trying to do to you today is to know that if Jesus went through tough times, that we are going through it is not, not terrible. But to stay in it is the problem. Because we must endure the challenge to get to the destination. There is a destination we must cross. We must not stay in the challenge area. As a pastor, I want to cross certain lines. There are certain numbers in our church we will not cross. We are crossing those lines. As a man, I want to cross certain lines, my figures. I want to take my family abroad. I've not crossed that line. That we are all in the same plane, business class. I've not crossed that line. Eh? I can cross the line still. You say, Pastor, is that line you want to cross? Everybody has no line. Everybody has no line. 
Somebody else's line here is that I want to sit down and eat cold stone alone. That's a line. Sit down. Say, give me cold stone alone. No, me and alone. Because you've never satisfied your, you've never felt like you've enjoyed it. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. I used to know a woman who suffered all through her life and she died in suffering. I know her. I know her. Went through back buses of tribune vehicles to travel from state to state to pay two naira just to travel. You understand what I'm saying here? Yeah? Listen, and I'm saying this to you sincerely. God is sending you to me prophetically that either for you or your children or your generation, something should change in this service. I thought I would hear it better in the door. I said something will change in this service. Somebody here, you have never passed an exam to complete success. There's always, I need to see a lecturer. I need to see a lecturer. From today, God will change your story. You will not need to see anybody again in Jesus' name. You will not need to beg anybody for your success again. Somebody else here, it might be that you have never been loved before. Yes, everybody is loved. Our mothers in the house, our sisters in the house, let me tell you something. You will live longer if you have some love. I'm telling you, somebody, I don't, this old age thing, you age faster when there is no love. Even doctor, I'm not saying doctor. Just stay where you are. But what I'm telling you is, if you can find someone that cares for you, you will live with you. I'm telling you, it's a very pitiable thing if you go to the hospital, nobody will care for you. Nobody. The nurse will shout, Jimmy, you are Jimmy, you are wondering why. You will now be you have any body that cares? Receive strength in your body. You will not need to be laid in the hospital for sickness in the name of Jesus. Some people need to enjoy another level of financial lines that they can say, I will transfer to you and you will not fail. That you can check your account and you are not afraid. Ah, I want that for you, sir. I want it for you. I want it for you. That you are no longer looking at your line and account and say, that there's nothing there, sir. You can get to that level, sir. And I'm not saying tomorrow, I'm saying today. The good thing is that it must happen first of all spiritually before it happens physically. Somebody is here, you have never been pregnant before. I mean, though you are married. God is able to give you a child. God is going to give you a child. That you have never missed your period is a line you will cross. Somebody here, you have never received a gift from God. You believe you must work for everything in life. Today, that's the question. You will know that there is a God that gives people gifts. That's what I'm praying for. Somebody here, you need to break away from your family patterns. Your family, there's a pattern, and you know it. You say, no, 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 no. Blood is thicker than water. Stay there. You must know there's some things. You say, no, not me, sir. I'm not going to die at 46. I'm not going to die young. I'm going to live long. I'm going to live long. And I'm going to live well. Who is saying amen to that prayer? Here? I'm praying for someone here that what your family has never done before, you will do. By this time next year, you will testify. I know next year looks long, but I'm giving you enough chance for your faith to build. Because if I say next this year, it might be too short. But by this time next year, you will come back here. I said, the reverend said it, and it is so. What you could not do before, what your family could not do before, what nobody has achieved in your family, I pray for the God of virtues, whom I stand to represent, you will testify of it in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not just talking about regular testimony. I'm saying what nobody has done in your family before. What nobody has done before. Sir, I know what I'm saying. Trust me, I know what I'm saying. But they, they, nobody has bought a house in your family. Nobody has paid for anything in your family. I prophesy once again. As the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. That God will surprise you. He will make it easy for you. I know something about the blessing. The blessing has intelligence. It knows what to do. From now, I release the blessing upon you. I release the blessing upon you. I pray that you will not with your own hands scatter your destiny. I pray that the opportunities of life will open up to you. 
I pray that you will not kill your own dreams. I pray that you will not give up on your destiny. And I push you to the front. That where others are testifying, you will testify. I declare that health will not fail you. I declare that it is well with you. If you believe and receive this this morning, shout the loudest hallelujah. Let's shout a second hallelujah. The third and the loudest hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate God for this morning. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? That word is prophetic. Go with it. You will cross lines. You will testify. That pastor said it last year. I'm here to testify. Amen. <laughs> you know, some people have never flown a plane before. 